very exciting aspect of metabolism is its regulation. In earlier videos, we have seen there are linear pathways, there are cyclic pathways, there are spiral pathways, etc. Now, when you consider a linear pathway, A is converted to B, B is converted to C, D is converted to a product. This is example of a linear pathway. Now, regulation of a linear pathway is very simple because if the product itself can inhibit one of the key enzymes in the pathway. Okay, so that is what we call it a feedback inhibition. This is simple to understand. But there are many reactions in a cell which are not linear of this way. It will have a branching. For example, an intermediate C can be converted to D and D can be converted to E. Similarly, C can be converted to F and F can be converted to G. See, from here there is a splitting occurs. Because of the splitting, two intermediates or two final products are being formed. How do we regulate this sort of branched pathway? If the problem is, if you apply the principle of feedback inhibition, which means E, if it is inhibiting, if it is inhibiting feedback B, let us say it is inhibiting A. If it is inhibiting A, which means if the concentration of G will decrease, that should not happen. So how do we regulate this? There are several ways by which branched pathways are regulated. We are going to look at some of these common mechanisms. The first mechanism that we are going to see is what is known as parallel enzymes. Parallel enzymes. A classic example of parallel enzyme is what is seen in E. coli. In E. coli, aspartate is converted to, um, you know, aspartyl phosphate by an enzyme known as aspartokinase. Now, once aspartophosphate is formed, that is equal to C which is the starting point for, for the formation of many amino acids. So from here you can have threonine, you can have isoleucine, you can have methionine. Okay, all these amino acids are made from aspartyl phosphate. All these intermediates are also lysine. All these intermediates, uh, all these amino acids are formed from aspartyl phosphate. So therefore, if one of these final product inhibit this enzyme, there will be decrease in the production of isoleucine, methionine, lysine, etc. How to circumvent this? So therefore, we have examples of parallel enzyme. What is observed is there are three kinds of or three isoenzymes are found in E. coli. Aspartokinase 1 aspartokinase 2 and aspartokinase 3 and they will be affected differentially by in the end product. So therefore by inhibiting one of these enzymes, if the other enzymes are active. So acting you by using parallel enzyme is one of the ways to circumvent or one of the ways to regulate branched pathways. A second way to regulate branched pathway is what is known as uh, sequential feedback inhibition. Sequential feedback inhibition. So how is sequential feedback inhibition happening? So let us use the same figure, same diagram in order to understand sequential feedback inhibition. What happens in sequential feedback inhibition is, let us denote this is enzyme number 1, enzyme 2, enzyme 3, enzyme 4, enzyme 5 and enzyme 6. Okay. What happens in sequential feedback inhibition is, E cannot inhibit this enzyme E1. 
no more G cannot directly inhibit enzyme E1 but E can inhibit enzyme E3 and G so what will happen if product capital E is inhibiting enzyme E3 the concentration of C can increase similarly G can also inhibit enzyme E5 so by regulating the activity of these two enzymes if the concentration of C will increase. Once the concentration of C increases, C will inhibit enzyme E1. Sequentially, the activity of the enzyme is regulated. This is called sequential feedback inhibition. We will use the same figure in order to understand another mode of regulating uh, branched pathways. That is concerted concerted feedback inhibition so as the word suggests it is a concerted effect for example in rhodo pseudomonas this kind of a pathway is observed so for example if it is in the in the synthesis of let us assume amino acid like uh, threonine or lysine etc and the enzyme therefore here it is going to be aspartokinase enzyme so what happens in this case is uh, 309 it cannot directly inhibit it has less effect on aspartokinase cannot inhibit alone no lysine cannot inhibit the aspartokinase but both of these molecules together both of these molecules together it is able to inhibit collectively it can inhibit aspartokinase so by doing that it is a concerted effect so together they are able to inhibit this pathway that is known as the concerted feedback inhibition another common method which is found in branched pathway is uh, uh, synergistic synergistic feedback inhibition so what happens in synergistic feedback inhibition a classic example is uh, uh, glutamine synthetase enzyme so what happens is um, each of these end products so this capital E can inhibit enzyme E1 okay capital E can inhibit enzyme E1 let us assume it can inhibit about you know 60% uh, okay 60% independently it can inhibit Another one is the G, the another end product. This also is able to inhibit uh, in this particular enzyme E1, maybe about 10 percentage. Okay, but together, together, though they are acting independently, but together they are able to bring in a lot of inhibition, a greater inhibition than the cumulative number. So that is known as synergistic feedback inhibition. One is, one is contributing to the inhibition of the other. For example, as we have seen in glutamine synthetase, many of the products like glutamine, histidine, AMP, all these are the result of, from that particular enzyme. All of them independently can contribute towards synergistic feedback inhibition. So in the last inhibition type we see in branched pathway is what is called cumulative feedback inhibition cumulative so cumulative feedback inhibition is similar to synergistic feedback inhibition each of these will have an effect but if the effect is cumulated it is additive so effectively it is able to bring forth 100 percent inhibition of a particular enzyme so what we have looked at is the the kind of a regulatory mechanism which is functional in branched pathways so we looked at the parallel enzyme we looked at the cumulative feedback inhibition synergistic feedback inhibition uh, concerted feedback inhibition so these are the ways by which some of these mechanisms are used in regulating branched pathways